Seven and six blessings to you for it's the tenth episode of our show. Welcome to Five of the Week once again. Five of the Week is a weekly recap show discussing five topics currently relevant to the NCAA on the SBA forms. It's already All Star Week. Users are now able to claim double TP on their media spots, podcasts, and graphics. Fantastic benefit that you really shouldn't miss, especially if you're new to the league. Yours truly got over their quarrel with the league office and now has a job to claim pay with. Thank the Lord, um, thank Sixers for that. Uh, for the Toronto nights are dark and full of terror. Let us proceed. Trusting the process with me this week are a cryptic pancake. Hello. It's me, back again at Cryptic Pancake. My player name is Finn Zengline, and yeah, and I'm the athletic director for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And Robotastic. Uh, hi. <laughs> I'm the athletic director for the Indiana Hoosiers. And also I have a player, Robotastic Prime, on the LA Rail. Notorious for still looking for his first double-double, but we shall do it to it. Opening up our five of the week this week is both the Michigan State Spartans, who recently undergone a change in leadership, uh, DB25 is their new athletic director, and a team struggling as well, the Wichita State Shockers. Uh, Wichita State Shockers have a 4-28 and record only four wins out of the 28 uh, 32 played and are currently on a losing streak of 12 games uh, their victories coming against the cardinals uh, kansas jayhawks i believe it's washington huskies and the georgetown hoyas on the first night of the ncaa season their uh, who are their best players i can't even tell <laughs> the yeah. Their, their uh, best player is best uh, filler. And their AD filler yeah, at right. 190. All right. So it's Gary Mayer because he had a couple of player of the games when I was doing the Sims. Uh, they're mostly led by their big men, Lesedi Moon and Gary Mayer. Mayer, either or. Uh, Gary Mayer is averaging around 17 points and a 55 true shooting percentage and is a decent power forward maybe doesn't specialize in anything but has a good uh, good stroke and shoots 43 percent from the three-point range and um, they don't have much to cheer about right now but they got a couple of new recruits and maybe if they can keep updating they can get better for next season for Four players playing their first year this season. What are your thoughts on the Wichita State Shockers? Robo. Uh, Lissetti Moon looks like he has all his TP banked. Mm -hmm. That's a thought. I mean, he can only, he can only go on to 150 in his third season, I believe. Have you seen Gary up? Mayer's uh, face claim? No. Go look at it right now. Oh, what was that? Oh, that's, that's all right. right. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but what what are your actual thoughts on the Wichita State Shockers? I confused them with the West Virginia Mountaineers. Really? Are they that bad? Or which? I mean, no, because no, because it's the acronym. It's W V U oh. and like W S U. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. there's like so, there's so many acronyms that I don't. No, it's like MSM, MSU. MSM is Mr. The, Splashman. MSM. <laughs> I. You know, yeah, too, yeah. I only have so much memory space. Mm -hmm. uh, another. You gotta upgrade, yeah. yeah. Something to look I forward to time. for next year. Uh, but no actual thoughts on their playing roster. They're, they're uh, freshmen. Patrick Burns. Small forward. No, maybe they are well, just, I'm, yep. They're a team that like multiple 
had, are coming off a pretty good season last year, mm-hmm. but their leading players uh, are now in the SBA. Like, yeah. from the top of my head, I'm pretty sure Detroit Velvet Smooth. Stefan Williams, yeah. On the Shockers last year. Yeah. And so now, due to them leaving and uh, the team not having already had recruits in that kind of could fill right in their role, mm. they kind of had a void there and... Yeah. They're suffering now, from it. Uh, yeah. uh, they don't have the scoring output or the defense that they would need to be a competitive team like they were last year. But they have some freshmen that seem to be looking like they're doing okay. And so I'm sure next season they'll be looking better again. Uh, the Michigan State Spartans, uh, they have... Uh, after DB took charge, he filled the roster out with a couple of uh, lost and forgotten NCAA inactives. But now he has a couple of impressive players. Uh, center Larry Day Bird. Larry Day. Uh, I don't know if there's a joke in there, like Larry D. I can't remember what Larry Bird's sec- middle name was. And a the guard Slade McPeak, who actually had a player of the game, I think, in the week, one of the weekend sims, so encouraging signs for them, they already overtook uh, the Wichita State Shockers, as they have now 6 wins out of their 32 played, compared to 4 for Wichita, and uh, they did well getting a victory versus the Duke Blue Devils but I I'm not a fan of that performance personally uh, they also took one versus the Indiana Hoosiers and one versus the West Virginia Mountaineers so none against the Fighting Irish <laughs> well we done sir yeah class squad three times <laughs> yeah uh, 140 win a 40 point loss to the Fighting Irish. A uh, couple of more tightly contested games, uh, improving the 60 points deficit in their second meeting and only a 3 point loss in their latest meeting last week. And they, their new freshman talent, if they can keep, keep the ball rolling and get more and more time with the ball, they might be looking mediocre by the end of the season, in my opinion. Uh, I've always been a overestimating uh, I've always been overestimating the Michigan State Spartans but um, now there's nothing much else to do than to uh, well, promote their possible mediocrity pretty quiet for pretty quiet for those two squads but a lot to expect from them going through the season now we're already at all-star week as i said and they only have room to grow from now on but we'll move on to our second topic which is a player who's flown under the radar a bit it's um, tega and i from the villanova wildcats i'm really sorry if i butchered butchered the pronunciation of your name but uh, tega tega is a small forward slash power forward i believe six foot eight uh played for villanova university the past two years as well so he's a junior uh, now he's over the cap averaging 27 and a half points with uh, 6.8 uh, uh, six rebounds to add to his name also shooting above 40 percent from three point range with nearly seven attempts per game He's been leading the charge for the Villanova Wildcats, who are currently 21 wins out of 35 games. Um, recently beating the Gonzaga Bulldogs, uh, taking back a victory they conceded earlier. That's him. Uh, and they're trailing the Syracuse Orange by four and a half games in the Big East division. It's like he's like a harder to pronounce Raphael Nazarians. <clears throat> yep, my deep insight. He has very good inside. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, he's an all-around scorer, really. He also has 83 point 
Yeah. So no slash. I don't know if I done that much either. He's at quickly too. Yeah, he's at three hundred now. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. I Nothing guess maybe it's just defense, very specific but... allocation of his TP. Yeah, so you can definitely see he went all out attack with the only attributes he really invested in being offensive ones with inside I jump, respect that. three point jumping and quickness, which are all stats that will help you score. And definitely been scoring. I mean, almost 28 points per game. It's very nice number to have. And yeah, uh, looking pretty good as a whole. Big, big yeah. volume of 30%. Uh, big volume of 30 point games for an IEB as well. Uh, he scored 40, I think, four times this season already. Once in a losing, losing effort versus Syracuse. Uh, actually, two times in, a, in both losing efforts versus Syracuse. And then uh, once. In addition, he had 45 versus the Cincinnati Bearcats this time in a victory. He has some struggles shooting free throws in that 45 point performance. He was only 4 out of 16 from the line. Uh, maybe could have easily broke the 50 burger if he had a little bit more composure from the line. But all in all, as Pancake said, a great scorer with great potential to light it up and send Villanova deeper into the March tournament this year. All right, Tegai Nebe joins them. That's the third pronunciation <laughs> now, and I've already only mentioned his I name think. four times, I think. So pick your poison, Mr. At Singing Hades. <laughs> That's rough. Uh, so pick your poison, Singing Hades. Uh, We'll be moving on to our third topic of the week, which is the Maryland Terrapins finally solidifying their position a bit. Uh, they are now an actual contender in the Big Ten division. Uh, Preseason, the expectations would have been split possibly between the Kansas Jayhawks and the Indiana Hoosiers but the recruitment of Othello Hawkins to play the starting center position, a magnificent coup by 11. Uh, Othello is averaging 15 points and seven, uh, 15 points and 5.6 rebounds, but their leading force is the pairing of Isaac Allen Richmond and Alonzo Brixton on the wings. Uh, Isaac Allen Richmond is averaging 22 points with 5.6 assists and Alonso Brixton is also averaging a nice number of 17 points per game. They both also are competitive on the defensive end, uh, have a solid number of steals, 1.6 per game for Isaac Allen Richmond and 1.4 for Alonso Brixton. What are your thoughts on the Big Ten Division competition and the Maryland Terrapins maybe taking charge of it? So, is 1.5 games ahead taking charge of the division now? Uh, taking, <laughs> okay. th taking, ch possibly taking charge of it, you know. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. Don't so get too Big personal. Ten, kind of a weird division. It's kind of top heavy because it has three good teams with like basically three teams around the 20 win mark right now. However, then they also have the two worst teams in the league right now. So uh, you kind of have to take that in account. But overall, it's still a pretty good division. I'd say right now, this year, the Big Ten's probably the uh, it sounds bad to say easiest division, but if you look at all of them, uh, it is the division with the quote-unquote closest, or I don't know, probably worst total if you combine them all together and average them out. So, I don't know. Take that for what it is. So, what you're trying MSU to say got is... Back -back wins last in. <laughs> so, what you're trying to say is that it's probably really easy to get to March tournament from the Big Ten division, but 
it's still really competitive between the three top teams. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it, in general, it's every division really has at least three or four teams that are all competing for the top spot and are all, I mean, except for the pack six where Arizona has just absolutely been blowing everyone else out and the orange also have a bit of a lead. But everyone else, it's super competitive and there's only one or two wins separating the top team from the second best team. Yeah, and Robo, they are your Hoosiers' main divisional rivals. What do they, what what are their strengths in your opinion? Um, they're solid around the board, kind of like my team. Uh, they just do a lot of the things right. They they don't put up massive stats or anything. No one has any amazing numbers. Yeah, what they do good is they're a great defensive team. It's they the Aussie the rivalry between me and Eleven. They have the best point differential in the whole league, and. So therefore, that's always something to keep an eye out for, and it's definitely a good prerequisite to have. I think they're like almost tying the Arizona Wildcats, but it's somewhere around yeah. the it's somewhere around uh, the best. The Terrapins have nine point three, and the Wildcats have nine point two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's it. <laughs> My oh. bad. So yeah, well, the next closest, the next closest is then uh, the Bulldogs at six point two. Yeah, but they I have... How the Bulldogs are only third in the division. Leaky uh, defense. Like... Very leaky defense. Yeah, that makes no sense. Well, leaky defense always uh, makes sense. When you got one guy dropping 45, 67, and you still come out with a loss, it's... Yeah. I mean, the well, average... I mean, it's basically the, average the same team I... that was last year, but better. Well, they averaged 92 points against them. So... I mean, you'll have to score a lot then in order to overcome that. For the Maryland Terrapins, they started out the season going 10 and 2. They somewhat have quieted down, but that's always, well, that's sometimes a scheduling issue on where you have the most of your losses, uh, where, where, where your losses come from. A big shout out to my Duke Blue Devils, uh, handily taking care of the Maryland Terrapins 97 to 61. Not letting anyone get going, and Othello Hawkins actually looking like a freshman for once. So, the Maryland Terrapins, like we somewhat concluded, they are really good at a lot of things. Uh, the Maryland Terrapins, sadly, in the books of five of the week. Uh, in more sprightly news, we have the ghost of Danger Golding. In spirit here with us and we will be presenting to you the fourth topic of this week's discussion which is the West Virginia Mountaineers of course the past couple of sims have been very very encouraging for them they had a 8 to 2 record during those two I believe uh, they beat out the Arizona Wildcats the Fighting Irish the reigning champions Oregon Ducks also came out of Gonzaga University with a eight point victory and um, well lost to the Michigan State Spartans as mentioned earlier they are flying high currently and uh, they're yeah just recently versus the divisional rivals Virginia Cavaliers their guard Amari Creed had a astonishing triple double for NCAA standards 15 points on 15 field goal attempts 11 rebounds but 17 assists recently uh, Creed has been on a tear throughout the NCAA uh, he has double digit assists in all of his six last games and nine in his seventh to last game so the Mountaineers are improving obviously I uh, wish we could hear Danger Golding's thoughts on them. I believe we will, anyway. But first, we'll get to your thoughts on them. What do you think about the Mountaineers, Robo? Um, I was honestly, at the start of the season, we were all kind of surprised at how bad the Mountaineers were doing. Just because going into the season, we all thought that they'd be a at least a March team. 
that would make the playoffs and probably make it at least to the second round. Yeah. But then they kind of had a really slow start. But now they seem to be turning everything around. Their guards seem to have found a balance and everything is kind of going into place. I mean, they have two uncapped players, two players at 199. And then afterwards, they have a few players hovering, hovering around the 100 to 150 mark. And so they're a pretty deep team, I guess. However, I think what they lack most is a true standout player. I mean, if you look, at the I don't know league leaders and in, uh, in pa- uh, not passing in scoring uh, there's not a single mountaineer in that list so uh, while they have a pretty deep team and everyone kind of scores in double digits they don't really have anyone that can pop off and really be a matchup nightmare for the other team on any given night yeah I agree and uh it's eerily similar, might be eerily similar to the last season's Duke Blue Devils. Uh, obviously, Amari Creed, not yet the player Miles Lefebvre was last season, but he is, like I said, on a tier, t- on a tear, more like. Um, so the Mountaineers are currently 17 and 18. They are third in the Atlantic Coast Division, which I think is was predictable for the start of the year so <clears throat> they they were supposed to be around that margin maybe not below 500 but that could i think by the end of the year they'll be above 500 yeah that could just be some scheduling once again where they have to meet the university of kentucky <laughs> or the washington huskies and might or the michigan state spartans where they might struggle but they are now well on their way to a March position and if they can keep this uh, win streak or recent record somewhat comparable to that for the rest of the year they'll be just a alright so I'm almost went to the West Virginia Mountaineers really? yep well, to be honest, I also almost went to the West Virginia Mountaineers. I didn't. <laughs> they they could have been better. One. Yeah, they could have been better one year beforehand. Now they're doing just all right, but I could have been teamed up with the advantage. <laughs> we could have been yeah, dual on your nemesis. For our final topic, uh, in celebration of the All-Star Week, once again, we'll do a All-Star Draft between our two co-hosts. This week, uh, Robotastic will be... Well, players will be clamoring to join a Team Robotastic, the last season's NCAA MVP, and his opponent from... Uh, Hamburg, was it? Uh, nope. Finn Zengler, <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> uh, in the blue corner, uh, opposite to Team Robotastic, will be shooting up Team Finn, Team Zengler, which which one would you yeah. prefer? Wait, I, I want to be in the blue corner, what? I, what? I prefer red, so... Oh, alright, yeah, Thunderbirds, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> alright, so, red corner, Team Zengler or Finn, Team... Zengler. Alright, Team Zengler and Team Robotastic or Team Prime? Team Prime maybe sounds too pompous, so I just take the administrative approach here and tell you that it's Team Robotastic. So, the format we're going to be having is similar to the NBA All-Star Teams draft. Uh, Two guards, uh, two forwards, a center. Well, that's not at all similar to the NBA All-Star draft. I had it mixed up with the all NBA teams so two guards for both teams two forwards for both teams and a center and in addition to that three substitute players so the order of Jesus, sele- pick a players yeah it's whatever like you can just yeah, okay. yeah. give a massive list so nice each team will select two guards two forwards one center 
three substitutes in addition to that. Uh, first taking turn is Team Robotastic. They won the coin toss and they will select ahead of Team Zengland. We will go in 1-2-1-2 uh, two, one, two order, so no snaking here. Uh, Team Robotastic with their first overall selection of the five of the week all-star fantasy draft team robotastic selects my bro from gonzaga mr x uh team zenglan is now on the clock a lot of good people to select yeah. from i'll go for my take that jack nipples that's coming out now so i'll pick take that jack nope i'm picking orlando orlando valoria damn <laughs> <laughs> so Orlando Viloria is oh his main position in the SBAO is uh, shooting guard, guard, then small forward. So Orlando Viloria the third will slot in as a guard. A nice, nice pickup, a really efficient scorer now, and a hot prospect for next season. It's now back to Team Robotastic and their selection with their third overall selection in the five of the week all-star fantasy draft team robotastic will select is um jj harkowood doing anything right now jj harkowood is probably in the process of fouling out versus the virginia cavaliers but he would be glad to join your team if you were to make the selection official nah <laughs> <laughs> I'll take Roenick, Austin Roenick. Roenick. All right, uh, it's Austin Roenick going to Team Robotastic with the fourth, uh, third overall selection, a power forward, um, a powerful power forward. Okay, so now it's my turn, and I just wanted to point out that Austin Roenick will be riding the bench then because Mr. X's primary position is power forward. Oh. So. Congrats for what? you not being able to oh, read. No. So I'm no, gonna be happy to take Cameron Millwall. <laughs> okay, juke me. No. My. <laughs> what is this? <clears throat> so, all right. You excuse would. me for that administrative oversight. Uh, Austin you Ronick. You would. <laughs> Austin Ronick will instead be riding the bench because Mr. X will be slotted as a forward. So. Last time I trust anything you say to me. <laughs> I thought he was too. As you said three. that, I was like, I'm not gonna say anything and see how this plays out. So Cameron, uh, just add it to the list of Robo messing things up. Yeah, so Cameron Millwall will be joining Team Zengline as their starting center. Uh, Team Robotastic are back on the clock, uh, possibly uh, looking to select a center too. I don't want to take Zajac. Uh, ew. There's he's... Hoplon Pararexis because he's a defensive Hoplon's star. Hoplon's a center freak? Isn't that... Yeah. yeah. Ew. But... Alright, I guess Zajac and X are playing together. I'll pick up Zajac. Okay. Alright. So, I'm gonna pick up my point guard now, and I'm gonna go for DMX. Zajac is actually a powerful center as well, so I can't play him either. It would be fun. No, so funny Zajac, Zajac's primary center. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It, but it, if he was, if he was. Yeah, so I'm picking up DMX as my point guard. So Dimitrius, Marquis, Xavier uh, fills out the backcourt with Orlando Villoria the third for Team Zengline. It's Ooh. back to Team Robotastic with another selection. You know, we will have the best bench in this situation. I'll take Mallard Mallard. Wait, he's small forward. Yeah, he is. But you were saying you, I'll have the best bench, and they proceed to choose a player that would start. <laughs> no, well, I think I'm not gonna pick all centers, right? All power forward. Uh, it's now back to Team Zengline after selecting two guards and a center. They're in need of two forwards. <laughs> okay, so I'll just pick all the we're... forwards. So you have to run a full guard squad, and the guards are worse than the forwards. 200 IQ players. I mean, as of right now, my team's better than yours, but okay. Yes. <laughs> That's because you got the only good guard. Well, the only one over 300 TP. I got both over 300 TP. Yeah, yeah because Ocho juked me out. I, I, I wanted DMX. Well, <laughs> you snooze, you lose. So, 
Then, uh, with you having taken Mallard Mallard, I'll take the last remaining small forward, and I'll take Roy Johnson to finish out my uh, It's not actually I mean... the last remaining, but the Roy Johnson will fit just fine. Team Zenglan adds a forward to their... The last board. remaining over 300. Oh, all right, all right. So it's uh, back to Team Robotastic trying to work out their card rotation. There are a couple of, couple of big selections in my opinion. It's not like this is unsalvageable. Is uh, Matteo Werner playing any good? This season he's starting as a shooting guard, but uh, as yeah, he's really listed as a point guard, you can select if you wish to. Yeah, I'll pick up um, him. All right, so Matteo Werner. The first guard for Team Robotastic, it's back to Team Zengline to round out <laughs> their first five players. Yeah, missing a power forward. That's Okay, then in that case, I will go for JJ Harklewood. Ooh. Ooh! Actual selection here. It's now back to Team Robotastic to select their sixth player. Is a... Yeah, I'll take Philip Shabbat. Alright, so... I'll roll with my boys. Philip Chabot for Team Robotastic. It's then back to Team Zengline to select their first player from the bench for their My bench. My first bench player will be Hoplon Parahexis, just because he's a really good defensive build and you need some defense off the bench sometimes. All right, so Hoplon Pararexis uh, joins the fold for Team Zengline. His brother still on the board, actually. So. Uh, this is not to influence Robotastic in his selection. He's supposed to make his selection right now. Um, I'll take... Oh no, wait. Has Innate Tega been taken? I mean, do I, do I need another four? <laughs> I feel like I gotta go... God. Yeah, I guess. I'll take Tega. He's been balling. Alright, Tega and IB joins the Team Robotastic bench, so uh, it's gonna be, uh, so far it's DMX, Orlando Villoria oh, the third, squad. Roy Johnson, JJ Harkowood, Cameron Millwall, Oblon Pararexis, and now the final, uh, la second to last selection for Team Zengline. Are you keeping track of these picks somewhere? I think for my next player, I'm gonna pick up another guard. And the guard I'm getting is, uh, what, Sean Stockton, Just so that I get some extra passing off the bench, All right. and that he can feed my scores. The creative point guard from Georgetown Hoya, Sean Stockton, also making an all-star appearance this year. It's now back to Team Robotastic to make his final selection for his all-star team. I'll take uh, Dap. Gotta love some shooting. So, Mark Diarani Plunderly is the final selection. Possibly a emphasis on Homer picks, as there are a couple of no Gonzaga way. and Indiana picks, both for Mr. Robotastic here, but that rounds out his roster. It's now up to <coughs> Zengline to round out his. A photos Parahex is picked up? Which was not. Okay, then I'll pick him up still as my last player. Alright, so both the Paraxis brothers joining oh, Team, Zengline. Team Zengline. So, <clears throat> Robotastic uh, unfortunately had to leave just then, but uh, thank God we got this extravaganza of an all-star draft completed. I will do a quick fast break simulation on these rosters, Please. see who comes no way, out on top. I'm just saying, I, if they lose, it's rigged. I might be saying, no way as well. Uh, for <laughs> Team Zenglan, the guards. Dimitrius Marquis and Xavier from Florida, Flo, Florida. That's the rapper, everyone. Big shout outs. Uh, Florida Gators, uh, Orlando Villoria the third, a shooting guard for the Arizona Wildcats. Then it's Roy Johnson, a forward from the playing for the Texas Longhorns and JJ Harkowood at Okocha Star me if you were unknowledged uh, JJ Harkowood and Cameron Millwall as the starting center 
for Team Robotastic. What are your opinions on the Team Robotastic? I'll... See his immaturity shine through with a him not reading for his <laughs> second pick and just absolutely just messing that up, and then him just choosing players that he had a personal bias towards over the best player available. Yes. Uh, this is my opinion slightly slightly sounds like my thoughts as well but uh, his team still has some quality to it it's not a lost cause but I think if you were to match up you as the team Zengline head coach would have the upper hand um, all right so the results of this sim will be attached to the forum post of the podcast uh, maybe there's gonna be some commentary attached to it uh, probably not if it's looking like a blowout but that's also our fifth topic in the books like i said robotastic is long left the ghost of danger golding could not find his microphone cord or the microphone i can't really tell uh, but we're still here me and a cryptic pancake Getting ready to sign off with our five of the week this week. Uh, Spartans and Shockers, Tega and Ibe for Villanova Wildcats. Terrapins solidifying their spot at the top of the division for now. And the West Virginia Mountaineers current run there on. Then we finished it off with this huge bone crushing. What's the word? Controversial. Five of the week All Star Fantasy Draft for All Star Week. So it's a thank you from me at Okocha Star and right here at a Cryptic Pancake. Yes, sir. Always a pleasure to be on the show. And we'll hope to catch you next week. And we'll hope to catch Danger Golding next week. Bye.